exciting day for me. It is the release of my very first book, a collection of poetry called I Would Leave Me If I Could. Now, I am incredibly, oh, are you stretching? Okay. All right, well, that lasted a long time. Thank you. I'm incredibly nervous, and that's why Jagger was here with me, because today is a very special, but also very terrifying day. Um, writing a book is a lot different than writing an album. Uh, there's something far more deeply personal about it. When you write an album, you get to cut out all of the stuff, all of the aftermath thoughts, all of the stream of consciousness. And when you write poetry, to do that would be an absolute injustice to the work. So you have to force yourself to keep it all in. The reason I wanted to write a book is because I felt like I had so much to say to you that I didn't feel comfortable saying from my mouth, from my face covered with makeup, from my face that you have just seen on a tabloid cover associated with some boy or some girl that I may or may not be dating. The face that you associate with whatever bad thing someone thinks I did. The face that you associate with however many records that I sold that week. Poetry is different than that. It's more forgiving, even though it's more personal. Because when you read it, you see yourself in it. Making music is like performing to an audience of millions, an infinite audience. But writing a book is performing to an audience of one. And that's what makes this far, far more personal. So I'm really excited to be here today, but I also, like I said, am incredibly nervous. So I ask you at home, whether you've read the book already or you're savoring it for later, to be gentle with me as I approach some of these subjects. Um, there's nobody in the world that I trust these words with more than you, and I'm so happy that you finally have them. I'm gonna be answering some questions at the end of this, and you can use the hashtag HalseyLeaveMe, and you can send them to me into Moment House, and they're gonna put them all together for me to answer at the end. One of my favorite lines in the book is a line in Mind the Gap, where I say, but poets, we hate everything. And that's primarily true, but there's one thing that poets don't hate, and it's each other, which is why I'm very excited to have my friend and fellow poet here to talk to me today about my book, I Would Leave Me If I Could, which is out today, and her book, which comes out next week, Film For Her. Orion! Oh my god, I'm so happy you're here. Oh my god, I was I like wanted to cry when you were saying all this. Oh my god, it's so wholesome. <laughs> Thank you. I think there was a moment when you had mentioned it being forgiving. Yeah. And I never really looked at it that way. Mm. I think because with poetry it's easier to because you aren't writing to a specific person sure. besides yourself. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think that was that's really smart. And that's Thank a really you. great way to look at poetry is how Thank it is you. forgiving to yourself. And well, to I have so much to learn because this is my first book, but you are putting out your second, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's pretty incredible. What is it like writing your second book? Um, well, you learn a lot. I am still nervous the second time around. Sure. Like the first time around, I feel like I just put it out and went away and kind mm -hmm. of didn't look at it mm -hmm. ever like since then. Yeah. Um, with this one, there was definitely a, lo a lot more thought and love put into it. Mm -hmm. um, there's less anger. There's more hope. Yeah. And it's kind of, you know, finding yourself writing a second book. When I finished the first one, I, uh, I was like, well, what else is there to say? Mm -hmm. I've already felt the feeling. Mm -hmm. And there's like, is there any, can I come up with anything else? And, yeah. Um, hence, you know, taking three years to write a second one. Sure. Um, but it's, I think the second one is, you know, you feel more secure in your words. Mm -hmm. You know what works and what doesn't work. Sure. And you can, you know, see the growth of, I'm, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure the same with yeah. music and anything yeah. that you do, you see the growth and your words and what you totally you put out. well I've read both of them and I definitely love getting to see like your journey like your maturity from Lux like it's like really really cool and I I noticed that when I was making I would leave me if I could because it felt so similar to when I wrote Badlands because mm -hmm. you know one of my biggest things about writing my debut album was um I, I remember thinking to myself at the time, I was like, I had 19 years to make this. Yeah. And then when it came time to write my second album, I was like, and now I have one. Yeah. To make another body of work. You know, it was like really, 
I don't know, I, it, it made me feel kind of like I was up against, like I had everything against me. Yeah. And when I was making I Would Leave Me If I Could, I found myself going through poetry I'd written when I was like 18, 19, 20, 21, mm -hmm. and like most of it I left untouched, some of it I updated, but it was also a really cool feeling to go back and read stuff I had written before. Because mm -hmm. there's two types of feelings I feel like you get. The first is like you read something and you just cringe into a black hole and you're like, oh you're my like, gosh, I, I kept, thought I was yeah, so I profound. I like, thought this like, yeah. 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 Like, yeah. I thought this was so brilliant. And then the other feeling is like going back and reading something and going like, wow, I was great. Yeah. And I didn't know how great I mm -hmm. was. Yeah. And like that's such a nice feeling because you get to like hug your younger self. And be like, you are so you talented actually did and you don't job. even know it yeah, yet. You yeah, know? It's no. been such a cool thing, 100%. It's also funny, like, to read something that you wrote a while ago and look at it after having kind of, like, overcome whatever it was about. You have a whole new perspective on it. Totally. Such a new perspective. Totally. I think that was, you know, um, with, you know, I've read some of your work, too. I think there really isn't... Uh, there are a lot of parallels in the, both of our books when sure. I was reading yours, um, you know, talking about your family and mm -hmm. um, both of your parents yeah. and this, you know, worshipping femininity. Mm -hmm. And we there's also, um, we both have a poem titled The Same Thing um, in terms of... Oh, I know, I know, I know. I would have thought I was... Yeah. I, oh, so I opened your, when I opened your book a couple of days ago, I, the first page I flipped to was Stockholm Syndrome. Yeah. And, and I was like... <gasps> Oh battling that as well yeah. so it's like you're collecting all of these separate feelings instead of really focusing and honing in on one which mm -hmm. is so interesting yeah and an interesting approach to it I guess because yeah like I said you you read back on old things when you were f like in the moment spur of the moment I'm mm -hmm. feeling this thing I'm writing about it yeah for me it's always like coming from a space of anger yeah and now that I've grown and I look back at those like I would never discredit the feeling of anger that I felt mm -hmm. when writing it but it is interesting, you yeah. know, growing up and you're like, I don't know why I was so angry sure. because now I'm much happier without, yeah. you know, whatever it is that I was going through. Yeah, I, I definitely get that. I also, you know, it's so funny you talk about anger. One of the things I noticed putting together the book was that I feel like I'm pretty notorious for not writing any like happy songs like all of my songs are like pretty dark like pretty sad yeah um and people are always like you know are you gonna write are you ever gonna write happy music and I always say I can't mm -hmm. it's hard for me to do that yeah and I kind of realized what bullshit that was when I was going through some of my work and like going through my old work because a lot of my poems are actually really nice mm -hmm. and they're compliments towards people just kind of like these stream of consciousness compliments and like I was going back and reading those and thinking, like, okay, one of the things I'm learning is that um, I'm I'm only capable of expressing how I feel if I'm writing it down. Mm -hmm. That's, like, a big one yeah. for me, is right. learning that. Because like, I can be face-to-face -face with someone and th be thinking all of these things and be like, uh, There's poetry in here somewhere. Yeah, mm -hmm. but also mm -hmm. unable to vocalize right. it. Right, no, absolutely. Like, staring at someone and just thinking they're so beautiful and so amazing and so incredible and they're just filling you with all these feelings and then being like, yeah, you're cool, like, it's fine. Yeah, no, like, like, like it's, you're, yeah, like, just, like, not special or anything. You're cool to be around and then, I'm, like, like, later on. I'm, like, not gonna go home and, like, write about this. Yeah, exactly. So. One of my, um, one of the early poems that I put out before the book came out was a poem called Ordinary Boys mm -hmm. and one of the lyrics lyrics you see I'm not, I'm not used to being an author yet it's honestly one, the same thing poetry sure, and lyricism for sure. sure one of the lines is um I write to I can't remember it exactly but it's like I write to put you on a page and say finally I've conquered you I've cornered mm -hmm. you in fiction right, and it's beautiful. like to be thank you but oh. to be like having to reduce someone down to a concept in order to feel like you can gain control of them. Right. I feel like there's a lot of that in your work as well, which is, like, I see you, like, cornering a person on the page almost as a means of being, like, like, yeah, I, see, I got it. Like, yeah. I have control yeah. over you. I know who you are. I know exactly what this is. I just wrote it. Yeah. You know what no, I it's, mean? It's easier to confront, I think, for me, naturally, I guess, with relationships or even, not even romantic, whether yeah. it be platonic or, you know, with my own family, um, it's so easy to have, you know, all of everything that you want to say to them mm -hmm. and never finding 
the right, not even just the right words, but the right moment where you, mm-hmm. for me, I'm like, I'm going to sound so corny if I say this out loud. Yeah. Like there's no, or even, you know, with failed relationships as well, there's so much you want to say, but fear of saying it because you don't want to look weak or you don't want to yeah. look per, being perceived some type of way. So to get over that, the easiest thing to do is to write about it and kind mm-hmm. of, yeah, write this idea of this person and hope one day they'll pick up the book and read it but yeah. also at the same time don't also yeah don't yeah. you know what do do I think a lot about one of the expressions I use when I'm talking to my friends a lot is the posthumous relationship status mm-hmm. and that's like when you define a relationship after after it's dead mm-hmm. so like the whole time you're with someone you can be like yeah we're just talking we're just talking we're just talking mm-hmm. and then as soon as it's over you're like yeah I dated them no yeah why what is, is that right? I don't know <laughs> I hate it I yeah. hate that and then Oh, there's, but the sad thing is, and there's, you end up writing about those people more than like the, I don't know. It's wrong. It's wrong. There's so much in, in my book that's about like people. I almost like putting it out was almost enraging to me because it was almost like giving them this amount of power of being like, you may, like, I don't want you to think you were that important. Okay. I just like was writing about you. It was like, I like needed content for the book. So yeah, yeah it wasn't totally. like I need an extra page yeah so. like this person's I'm like afraid yeah. this person's gonna read it and be like oh I knew she was hung up on me and I'm like bitch oh, like- no, I'm kind of the worst I <laughs> like over quarantine especially over quarantine when I was going through it I, I live alone too so it's, it's very easy you're brave. to like yeah, I guess I live alone too. Actually, I say so, you're brave, but there's always people like working around my house. Right. But I do live Technically, alone. Technically, so. you live alone. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I wrote angry poems about someone, and I was drinking one night, and I sure? just hit send. I texted it to them. I was like, yeah. "This is in the book. There you go. Yeah. Like, have fun." You did on God. Oh like, on my every- God! You know what I've actually done? <laughs> A couple of these actually. This is so insane that I can't even believe we're having this conversation. It's so weird for me because this is all so private now that it's out in the world. I'm talking about it in such a weird... I don't know. It's just so strange. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. But some of the poems in this book are, like, texts that I've sent people and, like, went back and looked up and, like, screenshot and then, like, typed them up for the book. And, like, how do I make this work in a poem? Yeah. Yeah. No. Literally verbatim. Like, top to bottom, a text I sent. And when I was going through the book with, like, Anthony and Maria and Peyton and, like, going through it with everyone, like, I remember, like, sliding something across the table to people being, like, and they were, like, wow, like, this is amazing. And I was, like, yeah, it's a text I sent, blah, blah, blah. And they were, like, you sent that in a text? And I was, like, yeah, that's why everybody breaks up with me. I'm, like, (laughs) super intense. Like, I send, that's a text I send to someone. This is real. It's right here. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm, like, I'm I'm texting someone at, like, 1 a.m. being, like, I would lie down in the middle of a tornado and cover your body because I love you so much. I don't want anything to happen to you. And that person's like, they're like, um, cool, I gotta go because like, you're insane. Is, yeah, 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 this is this, honestly, it's it's sweet and it's whole, it's it's a great thought Thank in theory. You. In Thank theory, you. Um, but I'm sure they wake up in the morning. They're like, oh, is she okay? Yeah, they're like, we good? like we've like, known you like, for no, two I'm, months. I'm a poet. Like, like it's like, fine. That's the thing. It's it always comes back to that, doesn't it? It's like I'm a poet. Exactly. You know, I'm a poet. Or like. Do you ever find yourself, like, in the middle of a scenario, and you're like, oh, I gotta write this. You're like, oh, I gotta write oh, this. Oh, yeah, my phone, like, my notes app, yeah. I just have, like, random sentences. Yeah, 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 And then when I go to sit down and I write, which actually I would love to talk about your writing process. Sure. And, like, terms of poetry. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. No, it's because it's so different for everyone, yeah. and I think everyone expects it to be this, like, I'm sitting at a desk, and I'm, yeah, like, writing no. this thing. Yeah. It's never the case. Uh, but, yeah, just, like, random uh, sentences in my notes app and yeah. I'm like I know I'm gonna go back and look at the sentence and fit it somewhere somehow sure um yeah it's just those moments for yeah. sure do you also like motif I find like I think you know what you do actually I'm like deciding for you because I'm a, <laughs> uh, I'm like speaking as a fan of your work but I find that like there's a lot of motifs I don't even realize are happening mm-hmm. like um that kind of run tangential through like all these different poems like for example like one of, there's a couple motifs in my book like one of them is eyelashes I talk about eyelashes a lot yeah. which are like a seemingly like insignificant or like redundant thing mm-hmm. but I talk about like finding lost eyelashes or like counting someone's eyelashes yeah. and then like watermelon comes up a lot yeah. almost like it's a motif of like it's very like um representative of like an innocent perspective of sex Mm -hmm. you know what I mean because it's like something this thing that you want that you only get to have once in a while Mm -hmm. and like you know 
then there's also this like danger behind it because like one of the things I allude to in the book is I don't know if your parents ever said this to you when you were a kid, but like if you swallow a watermelon seed, oh, yeah, you'll grow a watermelon, grow watermelon in your belly. Like, yeah. yeah, and that for me always had I always found some weird parallel there between like pregnancy yeah. and like having sex and how like mm-hmm. it could be terrible and this bad thing can happen or it could be good or it's like and you're not supposed to have it and so that's like a running motif through the book actually. <laughs> there's a poem in the book called summer fruit mm-hmm. and a lot of my fans dug it up because i had oh, posted wow. it on my tumblr a couple Stop. years ago but the original title of the book was of the poem was watermelon sugar shut up yeah no, <laughs> so i had to no, change it like to have yeah, it Harry I, know. I was like come on are you I serious mean, big brains big i brains. know everything's made in a vacuum you know <sighs> what i mean like all of us are creating in the same zeitgeist we're all around the same mm-hmm. age like making stuff in the yeah. same like with yeah. the same influences but I did have to change the title, so uh, you know just it's same fine. Wavelength, it's same wavelength, same wavelength. Yeah, no, I, I was... did. I did write it first, though. I know, There's like, a uh... date on the Tumblr post. <laughs> you guys, you collabed on it, and mm-hmm. it was a secret thing. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I was totally gonna name Flux Just Kids, but like Patty Smith took that. So. Uh, <laughs> it's like it really sucks. Oh my no. god. Um, yeah. So your writing process, I guess, is there a difference between? writing a book and writing an album and in terms of that because obviously you mentioned earlier you have to like take things away for an album whereas a book you just put it all out everything it's raw it's there do you find your writing process a bit different you know yeah I do I also think it's because I go through phases like sometimes I'll really like something and sometimes I'll hate it Mm -hmm. like when I sent the manuscript of the book the first manuscript of the book in I like went back through and read everything and just full on panicked Mm. and was like none of this is good all of this is bad I don't like any of this I'm freaking out this can't be my first book like and then I went back and like wrote like a bunch of extra poems Mm -hmm. like in one week like just started right because there was like things I wanted to talk about that I didn't touch on right so I think for me it's a process of elimination Mm -hmm. like I'll write little by little until I notice the holes of what are missing yeah in the story I'm trying to tell right but I mean, I tried. I went away to Joshua Tree, mm-hmm. locked myself in a house. I have I mean, I sat there staring at that laptop like, good Lord God, please <laughs> give me something. Give me something. Like, just sitting here like, oh, you call yourself a writer? That's what you're supposed to be? <laughs> Why is nothing happening? Yeah, it was yeah. terrible. What do you do when you write? Um, So I also do the whole, like, lock myself away method, mm-hmm. except for with this one, I went out of the country where I knew I wouldn't run into a single person I would know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't start on my computer. I think right it's very, yeah, I think it's very easy to get distracted on my computer yeah. and like obviously look Maybe at that's a million other things yeah <laughs> or like I want to listen to music and I'm like I that's I like to prep by listening to music Should that I, I know will inspire you know yeah. whatever emotion I'm trying to feel or you know read for 30 minutes before writing but it's always in journal first with poems you know obviously some of the longer pieces I have to mm-hmm. go on a computer but I feel like there's something intimate and special about going back to your roots of loving poetry in the beginning of you know journaling and so it's always fun also to have some sort of memorabilia I have like a whole notebook that I wrote flux in and now Mm -hmm. I have a whole one for film for her and that's so cool I wish I had it's fun to have those moments yeah Yeah. and I think yeah it's just it Mm -hmm. feels more like myself um and even if I hate you know, whatever I've written on page, obviously you transfer it to the computer and it's Mm -hmm. all, it's all different, but it is interesting to see the difference between what I started with and what you you ended with. Yeah. Yeah. And I get the feeling of reading it and you're like, this sucks. It comes in waves though, because I'm like, I'll be super proud of it. And then next thing you know, I'm like, I like, why am I, why do I have this job? This is so bad. Totally. Um, I read my book literally the night, two nights ago, cover to cover and was like, this is actually pretty, pretty okay. <laughs> I did good. You know, like yeah. I had that feeling uh-huh. kind of went away, which was a good, yeah. you know, resolve to land on. This is a random question, and I'm only asking just because writer brain. Did you intentionally, are you planning on series naming all of your works with alliteration titles, like F titles? No. That was, was yeah, that was actually, Film for Her wasn't going to originally be my second book um, oh yeah so it was just like this project that I had on the side mm-hmm. on Instagram that was fun and I think seeing the reactions 
of because film for her kind of started like yes it was poetry but it was more prose and short story sure. and there was I felt like people connected to that in, in a different way that they connected to my poetry sure. and it felt way more personal because yeah. you know poetry is up for any assumption that you yeah. know I could write anything and people could think it's about whatever it totally. is and film for her was straight to the point this is yeah. a story this is a moment that happened and this yeah. is why I chose to preserve it and so yeah that just happened secondly yeah. and I'm happy it did because I had so much fun with it yeah um but yeah That's not awesome. not intentional yeah sorry I was like a random question You're I was just like, thinking to myself well because I was originally gonna do that when I first started writing mu music mm -hmm. um I was originally gonna like have all my album titles be the same start with the same consonant but yeah. then I always wanted to make an album called Hopeless Fountain Kingdom so that's why it ended up being my second right, so right. it kind of like threw that whole Which thing is a great title. Yeah. yeah thank you yeah. um or like have like one word titles for stuff yeah I wanted to give this book a one word title and then ended up with a fucking sentence why <laughs> is that though because in my head with Flux I was like a one word title that's it like, you just that's, know it's done yeah but now I'm way more drawn to longer, longer titles a thousand percent I was like that with Manic like, I just knew it had to be one word, and mm -hmm. I tossed around a whole bunch of other stuff, and then was like, it, it's got to be manic, it's got to yeah. be manic, it's got to be manic. Um, which is funny that I ended up with, I would leave me if I could. Which, which is, is so good. It reminded it me of, you know, in films, like, when they obviously say the title of the film, like, yeah. right there, it's, like, obviously the first poem, it yeah. has that, and yeah. it's like, all right, well, here we go. Yeah, Let's, it's that moment where yeah. you're, like, watching, and it's funny, I, have you started watching The Queen's Gambit? I'm two episodes in. Okay, it's I won't so spoil anything for you then, <laughs> yeah. but, like, when when I was watching it and when one of the characters says, The Queen's Gambit, I was like, like, they yes. said it! My they favorite. said the name of the show! <laughs> like, it gets me gas. It's so, in Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Oh, I when know. When she says it at the beginning. <gasps> I actually have a poem in there that I wrote based off of the movie called Madonna and Glory. Oh, my God. Um, it was, like, right That's when so I... funny because I literally brought Portrait of a Lady. Oh, I saw. Yeah. <laughs> I saw. Don't you worry. Have you seen my tattoo yet? Um... No, is it for portrait? Oh, you haven't seen this yet? Are you kidding no. me? Hold on. I, I, I wanted to get the number 28 tattooed on me. Do it. Like, I, that, why is it so good? Celine, you killed it. Stop. Yeah. It's so, is it, um, did, who did Woo it? Who did it? Dr. Yeah. Woo did it. Yeah, that's yeah. good. That was good. Like, oh, that's so, when did actually, you get that? Uh, wow. A couple months ago, I think. Whoa. A couple months ago. I don't know, but it's like the moment where we see. Where you see where her gaze for Can the you, first time. Yeah, there you go. The female yeah. gaze. The female gaze. The female gaze. Um, which is actually a really good transition. Because um, I want to talk about um, how it's different for you writing about men versus writing about women. Um, so... There, I, the first thing my brain goes to is, I think, you know, I've only really had one real, you know, I've dated women, but I've sure. had one real relationship sure, with sure, a woman. Sure. So there are times where I hold myself back from writing about it because I don't want it to be too obvious that I'm talking it's about, about her. her. Yeah. Um, but any time that I, like, all heartbreak aside, any time I've written about women, it's been much more I feel like with men that I've written about it's been um like I'm wanting something I'm desiring something that mm -hmm. I don't quite have mm -hmm. and that I'm chasing this attention that totally. I'm waiting to get whereas with women it's much more soft and yeah. tender and, and it's having it's it's having yeah it's having and it, it, it is this longing but this longing with assurance that I know mm -hmm. that it's mine yeah um, oh my god yeah you're giving me, like, <laughs> that is so, that's literally, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, there's, yeah. and I think that goes, I mean, outside of poetry, just, like, dating as well, it's, sure. it translates into your own words. Yeah. Um, it's, it's desire in two different ways. Yeah. It comes in many different forms. There's a poem in my book where I kind of talk about that I have don't I have no idea where it is so everyone bear with me while I'm <laughs> looking for it I feel um, like I know which one it is is it it's uh, maybe it's called powerless oh maybe I have it no so <clears throat> it says I'm locked in the bathroom on a commercial flight Hillary Swank in a butch haircut sends a hijacked plane through my cerebellum I am sweating I pull my lips apart from my teeth like a dental diagram, and I display my gums. 
I sit to piss and roll my eyes, cuff my jeans two times, three times. I'm in my memory, riding a man on a mattress, back arched like a prize horse, grinding and grinding, tossing my hair around and gripping tight the ropes of ecstasy. Pornographic cries echo through my head in the airplane bathroom, and then key change, minor fifth to humiliation. I shift gears, a woman beneath me, squirming like a slug under a magnifying glass. My veiny arms and slender fingers graze across her like velvet. Why is the straight part of me powerless? That's beautiful. And it's funny, That's I was really so anxious about putting that in the book because obviously really? Well <clears throat> I'm glad because, you did. Me too, but as a as a as obviously as a bi woman, like seeing the straight part of me is yeah. like is not like a informed way of speaking mm -hmm. but it's kind of how you can feel in those moments of questioning or in those moments of panic and like yeah. the reason I wrote that is because I just kept thinking like I feel so confident and good and like you said like almost this like there is no paranoia of the having mm -hmm. yeah and with men, no matter how much they swear to the fucking heavens and beyond that they are mine and I and I am, yeah. you know, belonging to them and they are belonging to me, there will always be that, like... Sense of insecurity. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I don't know if it's a, a power exchange thing just because of, like, gender hierarchy yeah. and, like, socially, like, internalized, like, things of, like, men always being in the position of power, women needing to keep a man. Yeah. The idea, like, you need to keep your man, keep your man, mm -hmm. keep your man, but with women, it's like we have or you're ha this having yeah. of each other. I don't know if it's because, like, you know, for me, I've always found it harder, especially in L.A., like, finding girls that I connect with and really want to date that mm -hmm. when I do find someone it's like it feels like kismet it's like mm -hmm. well I know we're meant to be yeah yeah you know but with men I'm always like I'm not sure right. at all like right. you know what I no. mean I like I feel like unfortunately I'm well not anymore but I used to be like that with everyone yeah like the moment <laughs> anyone would show me any form of affection I'm like clearly it's written in the stars we're meant sure. to be together sure but I think yeah early on in you know, my experiences with women and men, there was always that security from the start yeah. with, with women. And, but there's also an insecurity and in my, I feel like how I present myself, I'm more confident with men because I know sure I, it's easy. It's, yeah. it's very easy for me. That's what I've known growing up is to how to impress men and, and what I know that they like and yeah. what I know will I, please, but mm -hmm. you know, impress them, I guess. Yeah. Whereas with women, um, though there's a security of knowing that it's it's mine mm -hmm. there's the insecurity of well am can I, I keep it? yeah yeah can I keep it am I yeah. like doing the right thing am I mm -hmm. am I supposed to do this or am sure. I not supposed to do this so it's this weird yeah uh yeah situation that I always find myself in with that that is hard to really understand or grasp yeah. at times yeah there's a little bit of that in in there I talk about Growing up, like, and I guess it's kind of that, like, comp het, like, that, like, compulsory, like, heterosexual mindset of, like, growing mm -hmm. up, and it's, like, having that drilled into you for years. Like, I read every piece of teen literature I could get my hands <laughs> yeah. on, and all of it was about how to make a boy like you. Yeah. All of it. Yeah. Which is, like, so now, like, I feel as much of a professional in dating men as I do in being a musician. And right. being, in, in baking. Yeah. You know, it's, like, if you follow it. a recipe, there's ingredients. She's a dating coach. Like, totally. She has it's, like, it, you're yeah. a professional. It's, mm -hmm. like, okay, cool. Do this, be this, say this. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. and it's like, I had a moment for me dealing with, you know, my, when I was kind of like, to, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, I don't want to say like tossling, but like, like grappling with my sexuality mm -hmm. where it was like, I was like, oh, like, but you must like men because you're so good at it. Yeah. Wow. And then I had mm -hmm. this moment of like, but does that mean that you actually, daily? Yeah, or are you yeah. just good like it being I don't know it was like really really yeah. complicated I actually felt guilty when I finished this book because there was more there were more poems about men than about women oh I think about that all the time yeah um with my work and I think I mean for me personally I don't want to speak for yourself I just have had more experiences yeah 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 um with men than with women because you know bringing back in that insecurity of sure. that of not feeling like 
you know, am I making the right move? Or, yeah. Um, you also have the years the, before you came out, too, where you were like, the, the, Yeah, and yeah. also the <laughs> not knowing the people that I talk to, if they want to be my friend or if they're, like, into sure. me. Sure. I, like, I will fully, I will text someone for months and in my head, I'm like, they just, they like, they just want to be my friend, right? Like, that's just what it is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, yeah. It's, it's hard. Oh, it's man. hard. I feel like it's like, we're, we're telling a very common story yeah. right now, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's like, that is kind of part of it, isn't it? This is like, like, that's a running joke. And, but also, maybe that's why writing about women is so different, mm-hmm. you know? Because it's yeah. like, the poets... We the thing we love the most is longing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's like like the instant gratification is like, and maybe that's why we don't write about the healthy relationships. Yeah, you know because there's right. no power exchange, no struggle, no confusion. There's nothing to conquer, nothing to grapple with. You just have it, and you know it's yours, and that's great. But like, where's the fun in writing about that? I know. I, you know? I think like what I have though backing like off of that with you know this book in particular was I think as a writer and just as people in general we tend to focus so much of our attention on the highs and the lows of our life and you know how important those moments are to us but it wasn't until um it was actually earlier this year I was like in the back of a taxi (laughs) <laughs> in Milan and I was so okay. alone I was yeah. so alone there because I traveled there alone and I realized I was thinking to myself I was I had everything that I could possibly want and, you know all these moments but I was like this is one of those times where I felt like I had nothing and I focused so much on all of these good moments in my life and all these terrible moments in my life that I, yeah. I failed to really hone in on everything that came in between and yeah. why those moments are so special. Cause I think about like, you know, every time you're with a friend and you're talking about all the things that you did yeah. uh, in the past, it's never like, Oh, we did this huge trip and whatever. Yeah. It's like the small moments on that trip, like sure. what happened? Like, yeah. and those are times where I think, you know, you think to yourself, like you don't think to yourself, I'm sorry that you're going to remember that, but it always sticks with you in a weird way. Yeah. Um, and trying to find beauty in that stillness and be okay with that stillness yeah. and not feel the need to only write even though it's the easiest when you're feeling really really hurt yeah right or, about the mundane yeah, yeah or you know I, obviously when you want to write about happy it's like it's a very small time frame sure <laughs> um it's a very small time frame and uh Especially, like, if da- when dating someone, it's, like, yeah. not even, like, the full honeymoon phase. is like, the first week of it. You're, like, oh, I could write so much about this. Yeah, And then yeah. it's over. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. I feel that. It's kind of like when, you notice, like, when you're with your best friend. Like, most people have no pictures with their best friend. Yeah. Or, like, yeah. not no, but, like, you know what I mean? Very, like, very, very few. few pictures mm-hmm. with their real best friend. Yeah. Because you're too busy enjoying the moments you're spending together. And you're too comfortable and too... in in your own internalized experience to think about documenting it. Yeah, exactly. And I feel like that's kind of maybe why we don't write about the happy either is because mm-hmm. you're too busy enjoying the moment mm-hmm. to make a con- concerted effort to, uh, to document right. it. Mm-hmm. And then when you write it down later, you're writing down, like, a memory. Like, one of the things for me, too, I noticed with writing is, like, differentiating between what really happened and, like, what my memory of the event Oh, my was. gosh, yeah. You know? It's, like, yeah. it's kind of insane. They're just very different. And then also the memory that you now have because you wrote it, you know? Yeah, it's, I think one thing that I, I know you talk a lot about, obviously finding it easy to write about sad things when I was reading your work, though there were many moments where there was doubt and, and obviously anger, there were, what made it so great was that there were pockets of hope in it Mm -hmm. and you can see the growth, you know, throughout the pages in that. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank um, you. But, yeah, it's, hope is a dangerous thing. Hope it's is a dangerous thing for a woman to have. <laughs> but you have it. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. I try. I think it's another thing, too, is, like, making a book for me was really different, I think, than if I was just making my name as just a poet. Because right. at the end of the day, I still do have a responsibility to, like, put out. Like, what what I put out is, like, and you probably felt this with your second. It's like you have a res- now that you have an audience. Oh, there's a responsibility yeah. for it to like have to a good better. message. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah. what I mean. Yeah. Like, 
you want to write about all the negative, but, like, there also needs to be, like, some crumb of, <laughs> of like, yeah. positivity no, because exactly. you have a responsibility now, right. you know? Is there, I guess, in that sense, was there a topic that you wanted to write about? Oh, my God. And you didn't, or you ended up putting it in the book regardless, because there's, I feel like there's so much of that. There's both. There's yeah. both. So there's, like, certain things that I cannot even believe are in there. Like, there's, like, sexual things and, like, details of, like, I actually saw, like, a fan, like, tweet earlier this morning when they had read their book, and they were, like, they are like, damn, like, Halsey's kind of, like, freak of the bed and she I was like oh my it. gosh you guys know this about me now it's so weird I feel so like exposed and naked like I've given you like a documented like I've given you pages about like explicitly what yeah. I am like in a sexual no, but scenario I, applaud like, that. I was reading I was reading it and I was like are you kidding me like <laughs> I like tiptoe around the subject you know like kind no. of like but you went in. No, and I was like, like in my mouth. Like, I was just yeah, like, no, just I went for it. I loved it. Like, I applaud that. Oh, also, very like, Bukowski of you. Thank you. <laughs> you know, that's what's funny is I talk about that a lot. It's like, you know, um, I wanted to do that. I mm-hmm. wanted to, like, take control of that sort of nonchalant, candid, yeah. sexual confidence. Like, I feel like Bukowski always wrote, like, he was dessert. And it's funny we're talking about him because like he's kind of like the antithesis of like what we are as writers which is like sexually empowered females but um you know I I I I feel like I wanted it I wanted a lot of the sexual scenarios in my book to felt like I I approached them as if I was deserving of them you know what I mean like as opposed to like oh gee I'm like so lucky to be here like no there was a lot of like no I'm deserving of this I am you know equally whatever like I don't know that was really important to me also there's a lot of stuff about like you know sexual assault Mm -hmm. mental illness body image Mm -hmm. um even kind of like I get into like gender dysphoria Mm -hmm. like me looking in the mirror and being like do I like being more androgynous like you know kind of dealing with gender identity and like that kind of thing which I've never talked about publicly before yeah um but yeah, there's a whole bunch of shit that I didn't put in there. Because there's stuff that I've read and I was like, mm, this is too much. Well, Maybe the next one. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. The beautiful thing about it is I always like to test with a few poems and just kind of like scratch at the surface a little bit. Yeah. See how it's... Uh, I, I hate that we choose it. We want to be understood, but we choose a <laughs> yeah. job that is the farthest from that. It's like, open to yeah, interpretation. It's so you know much interpretation. I mean? But yeah, yeah I mean... You're scratching at the surface now, which only yeah. means that you can show up even stronger for the second one, which totally. is insane. Do, totally. I mean, do you want to write more? I do. Yeah. I do really. I do want to write more. I I'm like feel more like uh, energized to do it. Yeah. I actually, okay, so I have a game okay. for us. Do you want to play it? Don't play Okay, okay, okay. Let me just preface this by saying it's supposed to be bad. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So in this little thing here... I have, like, a bunch of random scraps of words. All right. So we're each going to pull three, and then we have, like, what What do we have, like, five minutes or something like that? No, not even that long. I feel like it's, like, one or two minutes. We like, you get ten seconds. Yeah, we have, like, yeah, two. We have, yeah. like, one, like one in, to two minutes mm-hmm. to write, like, a short poem. Okay. That has to include all three all of the words, words that you pull. Oh. Okay. Do you, do you want to go first or want me to? Um, you go first. Come on. It's your book day. My book day. It's your book day. Happy book day. Happy book day. You my mom texted happen. me this morning because she saw the dedication because she's in it Aww. and she was like, I love you. And I was like, oh shit, I didn't tell you about that. So like, yeah. By the way. You. Oh, Jesus. <sighs> All right. Fruit fly. There you go. I knew this would happen. <laughs> right? Like the craziest thing. Uh, I'm not looking, I promise. Mayonnaise. <laughs> Fruit fly. I'm just getting absolutely just. This is wrong. This is, this is uh, you're this gonna get like evil. you're gonna get like the most you're gonna get like essence and like <gasps> all right okay 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 sun stained okay sun stained mayonnaise on the fruit fly there you go give you a line thank you okay Jagger you wanna come back over tissue tissue come on bud come hang out with us. Come here. Dumpster. Dumpster. Yeah, there we go. Come on. No dessert. Laces. 
okay. tissue dumpster. dumpster. I feel like we got two really insane ones, and, and one that's one. like a redeemable word. Hey, do you want to come up on the couch, maybe? Want to hang out with us while we play a game? Come on, come on. Oh, you just want this oh, instead? Oh, okay, you can just have it. All right, go. Get out of here, or you're gonna eat it right here. That's literally disgusting. Oh, he's okay. living his life right now. Yeah, he is. He's gonna clean the carpet for us while we play. All right, let let him be the distraction. Okay. Beautiful. Shit. Oh, am I allowed to curse? I'm cursing. I've been cursing. Wow. Um. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. When does the time begin? And now. Beautiful. Mommy's doing her job. was his only cameo. This is so bad. I feel like cat in the hat right now. Wait, are you making yours rhyme? No, but oh. like I feel like this is would it would happen in a cat in the hat book some way. Oh, Whatever. mine is literally so. Mine is like is like. <sighs> oh, I just heard a phone ringing. Mine is very like um. Like a uh, po poetry seminar pretentious. Oh. I love that for you. Oh. Um, <laughs> I love that I do. I do love that for you. Mine is definitely up for interpretation. Okay. All right. So. You know, just writing about sad girls. What else can I do? All right. So let's, my words were fruit fly, <laughs> mayonnaise, and sun stained. Beautiful. Here's what I got. Oh my God. I'm so embarrassed. The fruit fly. There are remnants of the afternoon, crusts of white bread, smears of mayonnaise on the doorknob, cellophane in the hallway, the entrails of lunch strewn across the room. A fruit fly lands on a windowsill, sun-stained light peeks through. Everything is disgusting, and it is perfect. That is so good, actually. No, that was actually good. Mine's Everything like is disgusting. <laughs> And it is and perfect. And it's perfect. This is giving me, like, um, gosh, what's that thing? Um, the kid, kid shoes never worn. Like, this is giving me that. Oh, my God. She sat behind the dumpster, the girl draped in blue, a tissue to her nose, a memory lost in translation, before she looked down and noticed her laces were undone, too. Wow. <laughs> okay, Orion. So literally, no, I had, literally, I was like, okay. Like, oh, my God. She sat yeah. and her no, she's undone, and her shoe. Everything is so undone, even her shoes. Even her shoes. Oh my god. There we go. 
New York Times, <laughs> New York put us both on the bestseller on. We're list. For Let's this go. This is what we need in the world. <laughs> okay. Well, Ryan, tell everybody about your book. Oh, my talk, goodness. Which camera should she talk to? This one. This one? This one. That Beautiful. One. This is film for her. It is a storybook of people, places, and memories captured on film. The love of my, uh, the loves of my life, film photography and poetry. And it is just this picture book of uh, poems and instances in my life where, like I said earlier, it felt like I was focusing so much on the highs and lows of my life and what, what I thought was important that I really failed to appreciate the mundane and those moments that I thought were just passing and they were a lot more important than I expected and really just this time to reflect on life, accept death, love the relationships outside of the romantic ones and um, yeah, really just reminisce on that beautiful reminisce on all of that and it's so good i've read it it's amazing i feel so lucky to know you oh, i feel so lucky to know and you. i love that i have a badass female friend like you that is so intelligent and so compassionate such an amazing point of view thank you for doing thank this you. i love you so thank much thank you oh i had so much fun You're thank the best. you oh wait also before you go i want to embarrass you i found I'm a tweet scared. from 2014 no, of yours no. that said you had a girl crush no, on me and i tweeted you back and said you are the most adorable thing 2014 here we are and now we're published and now we're poets. Mwah. i love it i love you <laughs> thanks babe thank you oh my god <laughs> oh my god thank you Let's see. Okay, watch them at watch the minutes asks, how do you overcome the fear of inadequacy when it comes to your writing? You don't. <laughs> you just uh, wait until someone tells you it's good enough and until you believe that person and then you put it out. I'm just kidding. Um, I think you need to just trust in your experiences and trust in your judgment that those experiences are worthy are worthy of writing about. Um, and also you need to remember that it doesn't matter if they are worthy of writing about because you you write just to write. It's up for interpretation anyway. People are gonna find their own meaning in whatever you say. You can't force everyone who reads the book or reads your work to get exactly the message from it that you wanted them to. So just put it out, throw it to the wall, hope it sticks, that's that's my advice. Uh, Songwriters Hall of Fame, Halsey says, throw it to the wall and hope it sticks. There you go. Um, okay. 929 Control, CTRL, asks, how do you feel about trusting your poems with people who may not be your fans? Okay, so that was a tough one. Because obviously when you're putting out vulnerable work that's about, like, painful things or like tough things that have happened to you you're doing it hoping that the people that receive it will do so in like a loving embrace and do so in a forgiving way I think I just had to learn to not care this writing this book was a big lesson for me and not caring what other people think so much and just trusting that the message will find its way to the people who need it the most and those are the people that I care about not the people who are like naysayers or the pessimists or the negative people Halsey Queers asks, who do you wish would read your book? Hmm. I guess. Maybe anyone who feels like they don't trust themselves all the time or is like looking around at other people wondering why they have it together and you don't. Um. I hope that the book is an indication that even people who seem like they have it together the most don't, and that we are all just a giant composite of traumas and pains and 
rejections and betrayals and embarrassments and humiliations and you know that's inside all of us we're we're all suffering and dealing with our own individual things and we are all capable of achieving great things despite that um I think a lot of my fans say to me sometimes when they meet me like they wish they could be more like me and I hope that this book shows them that we are much more alike already than they than they think hmm Heroin Halsey, with two eyes, asks, who was the first person you showed the final product of the book to? Um, well, I, obviously Anthony and Peyton and Maria were with me while I was writing it, so they got to read, like, some of the early, early drafts of it. Um, yeah, I, uh, I kind of didn't let anyone read it until I put it out. Like, even some of the closest people to me, like, bought it online because I wouldn't send them copies because I was so nervous. Um, so, really, like, the first people who kind of got to see it are you guys, to be, to be honest. Honestly, the people who got early, got the book sent to them early in the mail are, like, the first people in the world to read it because I didn't send it to anyone. Um, Flowers 3 a.m. asked, if someone didn't know you, what poem from the book would you show them to explain who you are? Probably hereditary or American woman. I feel like those are two really good indications of what I'm like because it's kind of like sarcastic and like self-deprecating. Um, yeah, those those are two, and I think like they're most like how I actually speak. You know what I mean? Which is which is really cool. They're like very conversational. Um, Tiny Ash asked, "Which writing makes you? Which writing made you feel the most vulnerable?" and sit back and think, holy shit, I'm really putting this out. Um, Lighthouse was a big one. Lighthouse was a big one. The Painter. Um, eight. Even though I kind of look on, upon that with, like, gentle feelings towards my younger self. Um, I Left the Party was a big one. Um, and also I'm angry because of my father, because I love my dad a lot, but I definitely inherited some, <laughs> some, uh, anger management problems from him that I have since grown out of, but as a kid, you know, so it felt important to say. Um, everything is blue said, how do you know when a poem is finished? <clears throat> it kind of finishes itself. I don't know. At a certain point, you just put the period on it and you go, that's it. That's the fortune cookie. That's the, I don't know. It's hard to explain. Also, when I start writing a poem, I usually know exactly how it's going to end already when I start it. It's like figuring out the in-between that is the most important. I think those are all of our questions, guys. I am so excited that my book is out. Um, I'm so happy that Moment House gave me the opportunity to talk to you guys all at once. I'm so happy Orion came to talk. I love her. She's incredible. I love knowing an amazing person like her, and you guys are going to love her book so, so, so much, too. Um, I just feel lucky to be alive in a time where poetry still matters, where writing words still matter, where people will still buy a book and sit alone as the, their audience of one and read it and connect to it. Um, because that's my favorite way of connecting with you, is through my words. It's not always through giant performances with huge production or major motion picture music videos with green band trailers or designer clothes photo shoot, late night TV show interview shit. It's this. This is as honest as I could have possibly been. Um, I have given you parts of myself that I have never even told my parents or told some of my closest friends. Most of them will find certain things out about me they didn't know reading this book, so you guys are all learning it together at the same time. Thank you for giving me the unconditional love that has allowed me to feel like I can trust you with something so personal um, in a lifestyle where it feels very much like my most private moments are up for auction where it feels like they are collateral, where they are currency. I gave it all to you for free. Well, I mean, you had to buy the book, but thank you. I'll see you guys soon.